In 2020, the UK needed just over 270 terawatts of power to heat UK homes, as it's going to cost way more than the natural gas you're currently paying for. Now, this is a message for you oil barons and gas tycoons. We're very much looking forward to the hydrogen revolution. But will it ever come? As the UK's number one hydrogen fuel cell boiler installer, it's quite high risk we could be very biased on this subject of hydrogen. If hydrogen does take off, we could absolutely clear up. However, our channel is all about science, maths and truth, not about conjecture. And this tells us that hydrogen is absolutely the way to go. Or does it? There's currently a big battle in the UK between the electrification of heat and switching our natural gas grid, which is what your boiler currently runs on probably, over to hydrogen, all in the name of reducing our carbon dioxide output to slow down climate change. Now the electrification or hydrogen argument could apply to transport and industrial processes, but for the sake of this video and our channel in general, we're just really looking at heating. This means all this boils down to two technologies and two fuel sources currently. Hydrogen to power hydrogen power boilers or electricity to power heat pumps. And the main reason we're moving over to this is because your current boiler, which burns natural gas, will release 215 grams for every kilowatt hour it burns. Now there's only one real commercially available hydrogen technology for domestic available at the moment, which is the Vitavala hydrogen fuel cell. There are others, but they're hardly taking off. You may have seen on our channel, I have one in my own home, which I've had for three or four years now. And we're also the UK's largest installer of these by a factor of around 10. So for us, we're very much looking forward to the hydrogen revolution. But will it ever come? The biggest market and the one that's going to affect us all is the domestic market. We all have to live with these things from now on. And that's what we're going to focus on today. So just how practical is hydrogen to get? And can't we just wait for it rather than investing in expensive heat pump systems? First, we need to look at where hydrogen comes from. And there's four types of hydrogen sources at the moment. The first is brown or black hydrogen. This is extracted from coal and releases the carbon in the coal into the atmosphere as CO2. So not really achieving what's needed and releasing way more carbon than the current gas we use. The next option is grey hydrogen, which takes the hydrogen out of natural gas. The same as the Vitavala products that we install, however that reuses heat, works slightly differently. After it's extracted the hydrogen from the natural gas, again it releases the CO2 into the atmosphere, so not a long-term option. Next is blue hydrogen. Again, this takes its hydrogen from natural gas. However, this has carbon capture built in. That is to say, they capture most of the carbon dioxide and store it before it's released into the atmosphere. However, the carbon capture process itself is energy intensive, making the whole process much less efficient. And the gas extraction itself requires energy, as well as releasing harmful greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. So, not great. In fact, there's a well-regarded peer-reviewed study, I'll link to that in the description below, that shows that this method actually has a 20% worse greenhouse gas footprint than just burning natural gas directly. Now, numbers can be massaged, but even if it was half the greenhouse gas footprint of currently burning natural gas, that's still nowhere near where we need to be. Certainly, as it's going to cost way more than the natural gas you're currently paying for, as we're taking that natural gas and running it through a load of additional processes. Lastly, we have green hydrogen. Now, this is much better. It uses electricity produced from clean renewable sources such as hydro, solar and wind and uses electrolysis to split water, which is H2O, into hydrogen and oxygen. And the current most efficient electrolysis plants run at around about a peak efficiency of 20 to 80%. So, green hydrogen. Sounding pretty good. Well, unfortunately, its efficiency can't count for much considering just how much green hydrogen we would need. In 2020, the UK needed just over 270 terawatts of power to heat UK homes. Now, if we assume that all UK boilers are upgraded to 90% efficient hydrogen ready boilers, we would need to supply roughly around 300 terawatt hours of hydrogen from the hydrogen processing plants 
to the hydrogen boilers. And the current, most efficient electrolysis plants operate at a peak efficiency of 70 to 80%. For argument's sake, let's say the technology is going to move on a little bit and it operates at 80% average efficiency. This will mean we need 370 terawatt hours from wind, solar and hydro to create the 300 terawatt hours of hydrogen to heat the 270 terawatt hours of buildings to be heated. This also doesn't account for grid maintenance or grid upgrades, which we're just going to ignore for now. With hydrogen, we assumed the entire country upgraded to a 90% efficient hydrogen ready boiler. Let's compare this to our electrical option of heat pumps. If the entire country was to upgrade to the latest heat pumps, the heat pumps released this year and last year, not the five year old ones, we'd be looking at an average SCOP, that's the average efficiency throughout the year per kilowatt hour, of 3.5. Now that's 350% efficiency. Now let's build in some pessimism and assume that the entire heating industry didn't upskill to really understand how to put in heat pumps and we only really reached 300% efficiency, which would be a crying shame. This would mean to heat the same homes, we would only need 90 terawatt hours from wind, hydro and solar, rather than 370 terawatt hours to power hydrogen boilers. Consider the cost. Green electricity produced at hydro, wind and solar will have a cost. Let's say it costs 15p per kilowatt hour for argument's sake. After this is put through the electrolysis plant to extract the hydrogen and then distributed to homes, this will only increase the cost. We can't put a 15 pence energy source in and get something cheaper out the other side. Let's assume this only adds one pence extra per kilowatt hour. If using these example prices, UK homeowners will either have to purchase 370 terawatt hours of green electricity for hydrogen if using a hydrogen boiler, which would cost around £59 billion per annum, or they could purchase 90 terawatt hours at the lower 15 pence, which effectively, even after the energy supply markup, means that it will be at most a quarter of the price to power heat pumps rather than using green hydrogen to power hydrogen boilers. We've used this slightly cheaper electricity price here because generally electricity produces at times of electrical abundance, so the value is slightly lower. So that does mean hydrogen can be a little bit cheaper. However, we're gonna to have to rely on the old fossil fuel companies to pass that saving on to us. In fact, all these numbers are changing. And one change that you may have not planned for is the long overdue environmental and social obligation charges moving over from electricity to gas as electricity gets more renewable and cleaner. According to the National Grid website, 22.9% of your electricity bill is made up from the environmental and social obligation charge versus only 2% for gas. This is an old legacy cost added to electricity to pay for green policies because electricity used to have relatively a much higher carbon intensity than gas. However, that's been plummeting over the last 50 years. As gas becomes higher in carbon intensity relative to electricity, the levies will be swapped over. If you go back and watch our What Costs More Heat Pump or Gas Boilers video, you'll see that heat pumps can be both more expensive to run than current gas boilers and cheaper. However, this is only really moving one way as heat pumps become more efficient, we make more use of time of use tariffs, which I didn't mention in that video, and UK installer training finally improves. The only real way to make hydrogen even slightly cost effective would be to use blue hydrogen. Now this is a message for you oil barons and gas tycoons. We both know that extracting hydrogen from gas, then attempting to capture most of the carbon dioxide is only ever going to increase gas prices hugely and give pretty much no carbon savings at all. Great for you, terrible for us consumers and regular earthlings. Although a ton more expensive than even blue hydrogen, clearly the green hydrogen route 
powered from carbon-free electricity and no use of gas is the only hydrogen solution that can reduce carbon in any kind of meaningful way. But before sending that clean electricity off to be converted into hydrogen at an efficiency drop or to power heat pumps, we first have to decarbonise our electrical grid and produce another 330 terawatt hours for our electric ovens, um, lighting and car chargers at our homes. Only after decarbonising our electrical grid can we then go and look for the additional 370 terawatt hours of clean electricity to produce hydrogen. And then the additional hydrogen earmarked for transport and industrial process. That's a lot of wind turbines. To give you some perspective, in 2020, we only produced 122 terawatt hours of renewable electricity. All of this seems a bit of a shame for us as the UK's number one hydrogen fuel cell boiler installers as clearly heat pumps seen a much better solution here, even with figures that favour hydrogen. But that's not the end of the discussion, ha ha! The wind doesn't blow on demand, and neither does the sunshine when required. This poses a bit of a problem with heat pumps, as generally they have to work a lot harder when there's less sun, i.e. in the winter. Winter is a lot more windy than summer, however, wind isn't really that reliable. With hydrogen, we can store energy in times of excess sun and solar, and store energy in times of excess wind for what's known as interseasonal storage. Now this hydrogen can either be put straight into the hydrogen grid for immediate use, or as I say, stored for winter use. Perfect. There is a slight challenge. To store enough for winter, you'd need bulk storage. And it just so happens that hydrogen is the least dense matter in the universe. Holding such a large volume of storage requires being pressurised in high pressure tanks from 350 to 700 bar, 700 bar being 690 times atmospheric pressure. Alternatively, we could liquefy it by reducing its temperature to minus 253 degrees Celsius, but both of these options require a lot of energy. This means the power required for hydrogen boilers from solar, hydro and wind goes up even further from the 370 to something like 412 terawatt hours. And that assumes no leakage rate or distribution losses from the grid. How about this? We could store our excess electricity as hydrogen, then convert the hydrogen back into electricity to power heat pumps. This will mean we'll only need a maximum of 275 terawatt hours of green electricity. And that assumes we had to store all of our heat pumps electricity as hydrogen and allows for 8% distribution losses. In fact, if we only had to store half of the excess power, that would drop this option down to 182 terawatt hours. But as we're all aware, we could just feed that green electricity directly into the heat pump at much higher efficiency. The other advantage of sending electricity to homes instead of gas is that it allows homeowners to store locally in their cars and home batteries at times of cheaper, more efficient power fed directly from renewable inputs with variable rate tariffs. This will dramatically reduce heat pump running costs and also negate the losses of turning green electricity into hydrogen in the first place. The future is exciting. Storing green electricity as hydrogen to power our heat pumps is one option, as are the newer types of grid electrical storage, such as TVP, which is 50% efficient at storing electricity and up to 30 times more cost effective than lithium ion batteries. There's actually plans to launch one this year, one in 26, and there's a gigawatt installation being launched in 2028. Far better than the 40% efficiency of turning green electricity into hydrogen and back to electricity again. With all this in mind, it's kind of obvious that there's not really much that compares to the heat pump route. Now, I know what everyone's gonna tell me in the comments. Heat pumps are too expensive to install. Well, if you want my answer to that, you're gonna to have to wait until the next video. Of course, some tasks like industrial processes will need gas or hydrogen due to the temperatures required. And many industrial process plants are looking at self-hydrogen generation here. So whether moving the grid over to hydrogen or not is still kind of a little bit contentious. But the reality here will be a mix of solutions. So as we always say, there's no panacea. I was wearing this t-shirt for a reason. Some older properties will require high temperature heat pumps. And although these were historically known as being really expensive to run, Compared to hydrogen, they are cheap as chips. And in reality, the hydrogen boilers going in now are very unlikely to still be in use when hydrogen is even remotely a plausible solution. 
One last thing, all of this obviously comes after insulation first. Insulation first, there I said it, so no one can put it in the comments. So in summary, the very cheapest hydrogen, blue hydrogen, which comes from natural gas, is gonna be four to five times more expensive than running a heat pump and give no carbon savings over the current gas boilers that we run. Hydrogen can be used, but the cheapest and most efficient way for you, the homeowner, is as grid storage to power your heat pump, not for a hydrogen power boiler. And finally, requiring only 90 terawatt hours for a heat pump versus 370 for a hydrogen power boiler kind of speaks for itself. Or we could use something that's 37% more efficient than hydrogen boilers and has been around for years. We would only need 270 terawatt hours to power our good old trusty electric heaters. Hi guys, producer Harrison here. While Adam enjoys his electric heater, I just wanted to take the opportunity to encourage you to check out our heating mastery courses over on our website, to invite you to like the video and subscribe with notifications for more free content on renewable heating.